from static web pages to social media platforms that know more about us than our own families. The internet has come a long way, but what if the next evolution of the web wasn't owned by tech giants, but by you? Welcome to Web3 The Decentralized Internet. But what is it? How does it work? And is it really the future? Let's break it down. To understand Web3, let's quickly rewind. Web1 was read-only, static sites, no interaction. Web2 is what we use today, interactive, social, mobile, but centralized. Platforms like Google, Facebook, and Amazon dominate. Web3 aims to shift power away from these centralized entities. Using blockchain and decentralized technologies, Web3 equals decentralized plus trustless plus user owned. In Web3, you control your data, your identity, and even the platforms you use. It's not just a new internet, it's a new philosophy. So how does Web3 actually work? It's built on three main ideas. One, blockchain technology, a decentralized ledger where data can't be tampered with. Think of it like a database that everyone can trust without a middleman. Two, smart contracts, self-executing code that lives on the blockchain. They replace the need for third parties. Imagine renting an Airbnb without Airbnb. 3. Crypto wallets and tokens instead of signing in with Google, you use a wallet like MetaMask. And instead of paying with dollars, you use tokens that often represent ownership or access. Everything in Web3 is powered by code, not corporations. You might already be using Web3 tools and not even realize it. Here are a few examples. Ethereum a platform to build decentralized apps or dApps. OpenSea a marketplace for ENTs, which are digital assets that prove ownership. Uniswap a decentralized exchange where you can trade crypto without a middleman. Lens Protocol a decentralized social media network where you own your profile and content. These platforms give power back to users no data harvesting, no centralized control. Of course, Web3 isn't perfect. It faces serious challenges. Scalability blockchain networks are often slower and more expensive than centralized servers. User experience setting up wallets and managing keys can be confusing. Relation and scams with no central authority. Web3 is a wild west for fraud for now. But these are growing pains. Just like the early internet, Web3 is evolving rapidly. So is Web3 the future? It's already here, but it's still early. The core idea is simple. Take control back from corporations and give it to users. Whether it becomes mainstream or stays niche, one thing's clear. The way we interact with the internet is changing. Web3 isn't a tech trend, it's a power shift. Curious about how to dive into Web3 yourself? Hit that like button, subscribe, and let us know in the comments what part of Web3 excites or worries you most. We've got more videos coming on crypto, DAOs, and digital identity. Stay tuned.